Hey guys, welcome to part three of this video. This is actually turned out to be a much longer video than I anticipated. Be sure to go back and watch part one and part two if you haven't seen those videos yet. I'm trying to talk about every film um, from when I've been alive, um, from every year I've been alive. So basically I was born in 1990, so I'm covering my favorite film from 1990 all the way to um, the present year. So I'm trying to pick one film from each year that I've been alive and... Um, basically tell you what it is and why it's there and all that good stuff. So uh, we left off at 2010. Um, so let's get going from there. And hopefully I can finish the rest of this video in part three here. So uh, for 2010, I have Inception. Uh, Christopher Nolan's one of my favorite all-time directors. Uh, he made such a different movie. It was his follow-up to The Dark Knight, which I also love, absolutely love. Uh, the Dark Knight is probably my all-time favorite Christopher Nolan film. But for 2010, Inception was my favorite film for that specific year. It was different. It was unique. I've always been fascinated by the dream world. I love the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, which also explore the dream world. Um, I thought Christopher Nolan did a really good job with this. Um, not quite as surreal as I was anticipating, but what made this film so unique was it was definitely a maze. It definitely made you think. Um, it made you think about the characters and about what exactly was going on with Leo DiCaprio. Was he dreaming the whole movie? Was he in a reality? Is he still within a dream within a dream? Um, Inception um, offers all these questions and answers throughout its runtime, and it's such a great, different, unique movie. Um, it had an all-star cast in it. Um, I can't even think of the cast just because there's so many great names that come to mind. Uh, but like it had Ellen Page and Tom Hardy and Cillian Murphy and... Uh, Tom Behringer and things like that. So I had tons of great names that come to mind. I absolutely love Inception. It was my favorite film of 2010. And in 2011, we have the film Source Code. Duncan Jones is a very underappreciated director, but Source Code is easily my favorite film that he's ever worked on. And I'm excited. I hope he gets that Rogue Trooper movie made eventually, if I've already heard about it. It sounds like a very interesting movie. Um, and I, I, I admire what he did with Warcraft, but it, it just wasn't that great of a movie. But I, I, I admired his passion for getting that made but uh for source code my favorite film of 2011 that he directed um definitely keeps you guessing the whole time and once the big reveal happens um it makes complete sense uh, i love how different and unique it is once again so that seems to be the running theme here i seem to love different and unique things in my movies so um in source code specifically though i love um how it's it's a very different kind of mystery. He only has eight minutes at a time to kind of piece certain things together. Who does he talk to? Um, what actions does he have to take within eight minutes? What's something he has to do in that eight-minute period while still kind of figuring out other things, kind of figuring out the people, figuring out who's getting off the train and things like that. So Source Code is a very interesting mystery suspense thriller that I still love to this day, and it's fun to kind of pick little fun things about it that um, you might have missed from the first couple of viewings and things like that. So it's definitely fun in that vibe where you kind of pick up different small things about it every time you watch it. So easily my favorite film from 2011 was Source Code. At 2012, we have probably another one of my all-time favorite movies. I talk to this movie, <laughs> I talk about this movie all the time to everybody, uh, and I mean everybody, friends, family, relationships, everybody. Um, so... Uh, then that's Ruby Sparks. Um, I absolutely love this film. I even have a t-shirt of this movie. Uh, Ruby Sparks is one of those movies where I wish I made this movie. Uh, the way it's written, the way it's directed, the way it's produced, the way it looks. Uh, I love everything about it. I love the film's concept. I love this idea of this writer who is suffering writer's block and just trying to figure out something to write again. And he writes about this perfect girl that he wishes he was dating and one morning he wakes up and he's in a relationship with her and she's living with him and the film plays off of you know what exactly could he get away with what kind of things can he get away with while writing the story about her and what are some things that people he knows and loves kind of wishes he would try out with her and when things don't go right you know how does he go about that and things like that so i just absolutely love ruby sparks easily one of the most fascinating films i've ever seen Easily my favorite film of 2012. At 2013, we have a film that not a lot of people saw, and I really wish it had more attention at the Oscars, and it didn't. Um, and that's the film Enough Said by Nicole Hol Holofsoner, if I can pronounce her name right. Uh, you know, she's made Walking and Talking and Please Give and some several other big comedy movies. Um, Enough Said is, was a much smaller movie, but easily the best biggest statement made that year in 2013 and easily the best film I saw that year. Um, it just has so many different things to say about people who are divorced or separated or want to find love again. They they found love at one point, but there's, they're 
trying to move on and find it again. Uh, how exactly do you approach love when you already have kids and kind of found your living arrangement and what you know you're pursuing your career and things like that so enough said i think answers these questions in all the right ways there's tons of fun little embarrassing things that julia louise dreyfus's character gets involved with throughout the movie tons of fun things they do with james candelfini and Catherine keener and all these fun actors and actresses who got involved with it. Definitely a very funny, honest, real movie that really says a lot about people who are falling in love at a later time in life. I absolutely love Enough Said. It was my favorite film of 2013. At 2014, we have X-Men Days of Future Past. I really like the X-Men movies, but X-Men Days of Future Past nailed everything about an X-Men movie I would ever want to see. Uh, the time travel element was genius for an X-Men movie. Hugh Jackman gives his best performance as Wolverine. Um, Patrick Stewart and James McAvoy play both a great young and old Professor Xavier, respectively. Same with Michael Fassbender and Ian uh, McKellen playing Magneto. Um, there's just so many... Everything I would ever ask for in the X-Men movie was in Days of Future Past. Rather, it's developing the characters in interesting ways, taking the universe in interesting directions, um, playing off of a time period that would really kind of frown upon mutants and kind of want to kill them off. And, you know, the mutants would really kind of struggle to survive in such an environment. And so there's so many great and interesting ideas that are explored in X-Men Days of Future Past and end up being my favorite film of 2014. At 2015, we have Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. So many people were scared with how J.J. Abrams was going to continue the Star Wars franchise, and I absolutely love how he did it with The Force Awakens. We got interesting new characters. We cared about the characters. We cared about the settings and the places and the scenarios they get involved with. They bring back fun and interesting classic Star Wars characters in interesting ways. Um, they've just did everything I would ever want in a Star Wars reboot, and J.J. Abrams, who I absolutely love as well, uh, really brought all the right ingredients to a Star Wars movie. I absolutely love Star Wars The Force Awakens. It was my favorite film of 2015. At 2016, we have the Damien Chazelle surprise favorite, La La Land, which was pretty big at the Oscars. I think it could have, been, it sh it could have and should have won more awards, though. Uh, I absolutely love La La Land. Um, I'm really not a big fan of musicals, but La La Land showed you how to do a musical, how to bring up musical numbers in just the right ways at just the right times. It was heartbreaking. It has so much to say about film and about Los Angeles and about people falling in love and people moving away from love and how they handle love when their hearts are broken and things like that. It has a lot to say about music. It just has so much to say about life, so much to say about film. I absolutely love the execution that Damien Chazelle chose to do with this movie and how it felt like an older film and it was bright and colorful and happy and everything I would ever ever, ever I could ever ask for in a movie because I just I love it so much and I get so giddy talking about it uh 2016 easily my favorite film from that year was La La Land for 2017 we have Wonder Woman I love Patty Jenkins she was the perfect choice for the Wonder Woman directing role uh, Gal Gadot was the perfect choice for Wonder Woman, I thought. Another interesting film that has so much to say about life and kind of makes us think about life. And we, we're watching an interesting superhero film as that plays out. And Gal Gadot and Chris Pine have such interesting screen chemistry with each other. And when they do the World War I stuff, it's interesting. And you can definitely see how the Wonder Woman character would respond to certain ways to certain things in that era. Um, I absolutely loved Wonder Woman. I hope the DCEU can get back on the right track again with the help of this wonder woman movie that was just so amazing and wonderful i absolutely loved wonder woman it was my favorite film of 2017 at 2018 which was just in this passing year uh ralph breaks the internet was my favorite film of that year so much to say about video games so much to say about the internet so much to say about your own creative juices and kind of pursuing that in, in the right way that you believe in, um, getting people to kind of believe in your approach on something, your creativity on something. I absolutely loved Ralph Breaks the Internet. It was my favorite film of 2018. So for 2019, it'll kind of disappoint some of you for how I'm going to approach this. So 2019 wasn't done yet by the time I filmed this video, so I really didn't officially know what my favorite film of 2019 is. But I can tell you my favorite film of 2019 so far, and that's Avengers Endgame. And today is August 3rd of 2019. So that was my favorite film of 2019 at that time. So who knows if it's going to remain in that number one spot or not. But Avengers Endgame is my favorite film of 2019 so far. 
So who knows if that's going to get topped or not. We'll have to see how the rest of 2019 plays out. So that was my favorite film of 2019 so far is Avengers Endgame. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, you guys. I know it's a long three-part video for those who sticked around for all three parts. Um, it's kind of fun to kind of look back at your life and kind of look at every favorite film you had from each year you've been alive. And so these are my 29 favorite films of 29 films. <laughs> 29 years of 29... Let's see if I can pronounce this right. 29 years of movies for 29 years of favorites. That was the title I provided for this video. So hope you guys had fun watching this, and I'll see you guys here for the next video.